All right, guys, welcome to the show. Today on the show, I have uh, Becky Robinson, who is the CEO of a website called Weaving Influence. Um, Becky's on the show today to talk about uh, her book launching services that she offers through her website and share her story. Uh, if you kind of want to give a story, Becky, and you know, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about how, uh, how you all got started with um, Weaving Influence. I would be glad to share my story. Thanks. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom until January of 2009, and uh, I don't know about you, but I had not been on social media channels at all. I was kind of a later adopter, and so in January of 2009, I got on Facebook for the first time, and I decided I had this intuitive sense that I should connect with anyone I could, you know, people from junior high even who I hadn't seen in 20 years, and one of the people I connected with in the first few weeks of being on Facebook was a high school classmate named John, and one of the first things that I saw that he posted was that he was looking for freelance writers and writing had always been a passion of mine. So I responded to his update and in fact I, I sent him a private message and I said, hey John, you know, here's a bunch of freelance writers that I know that we went to school with and I listed a whole long line of them and then I, at the very end I said, hey, but you know, I've always wanted to do freelance writing. So he emailed me back and he cut through all of my baloney and he said, send me a writing sample. So um, this is kind of a long way of getting to how I got into the book launching business, but basically I ended up working for this university. I learned how to use social media for marketing. I uh, ran several Facebook pages. I uh, grew some Twitter accounts. I used you know, online channels to draw traffic to this leadership related a blog and in the process I learned how to use social media like I said um, really loved social media loved interacting on Twitter loved writing blogs um, and all of that led me to a job as a social marketing director with a, a consultant named Kevin Eikenberry who's out of Indianapolis And the very first thing that Kevin asked me to do when I was working on his behalf was to plan a social media launch for his book that came out in February of 2010 and it's a book called from bud to boss it's a leadership title and you know I didn't necessarily have any education as it relates to well PR or marketing or publicity but I was mostly operating on pure guts in terms of just like finding my way toward what it would take to use social media to launch a book and I absolutely loved the process and so what I did is I started uh, John I continued working with Kevin as it relates to his book marketing and publicity and all of that but people on Twitter saw what I had done and many people started to reach out to me for advice on you know hey I'm about to launch a book can you give me any tips or what would you recommend how can I use Twitter to launch my book and for months and months people would you know come to me and say hey can I hire you to help me launch my book on social media and I said no for a long time because I liked the steady paycheck of you know being someone's employee and knowing that I was gonna get a check every month no matter what right. and I was very I was really reluctant to kind of start my own thing now at the same time I did have a blog and weaving influence started out as just a blog and so I would share personal insights some stuff about social media just whatever I felt like sharing and finally in about the fall of 2000 and 11 I started to take on some private coaching clients related to social media and I really love that one-on-one -on -one, teaching people how to grow their influence um, and then in early 2012 I took on my first private book launch client thinking that it would be kind of a side thing to my my day job but very quickly business came in and soon I couldn't really juggle my job and my business in fact I started to um, gather some subcontractors to help me in the work and by June of last year I decided that I couldn't live this dual life anymore I couldn't be someone's employee and be leading a team and growing a business at the same time so I took a leap of faith and went into doing my business full-time in June of last year so in that time we've launched using social media and now traditional PR which is a service we've added in the last few months um, we've launched 20 one books and by the end of this year it will be 23 and we have several books that we're uh, planning to launch in the new year and obviously new prospects coming in all the time um, and we focus primarily on launching business and leadership titles although we have done a few books that are in the inspirational space okay awesome now I mean I, I don't know if um in terms of like publishing or like what what types of services are you guys offering is it mostly just really getting like sort of a reach out there for the books and um, really helping people become known through these book launches 
Well, we conceptualize our book launch services in four phases. Um, the first obvious and most important part is, you know, if you want to promote your book online, you have to have an online presence and you need to gather a following of fans and interested friends and um, you want to be able to create a network of supporters that it, that's mutually beneficial where you're helping others and being generous and in return when it comes time for you to bring your book into the world people are going to be excited and want to help you as well so the first thing that we help people do is get established as it relates to optimizing their social media channels but also we help uh, we also build websites uh, because my strongly held belief is that the center of any social media strategy is the author's own website so whether the author has a website or not you know sometimes we build those websites for them other times we help them optimize their own websites to be the center of their social media strategy but the beginning of what we do is really in helping people to expand their online connections and influence uh, the second thing that we do, John, is that we um, do what we call the working phase. So if you're going to launch a book using social media, there are lots of building blocks to put into place. And uh, probably the most critical is to reach out to blogger influencers. One of the things that we strive to do with every book launch is make sure that many, many bloggers in the space are writing and talking about our author's books. So the working phase is where we um, connect to the relevant bloggers who might be willing to review and write about our author's books. So the third phase is called the launching phase, John, and in that phase we focus our clients' networks, energy, and attention around one week of tons of promotion and publicity around the book. So our hope would be that during a launch week our clients would have, you know, 20 to 40 um, bloggers writing and talking about their book, even more than that. You know, we want to see um, 50 Amazon reviews for our authors in the first week after the book's available for reviews on Amazon. We right. want to see lots of radio shows, lots of um, podcasts, um, as much traditional media as we can gather. And the, the point is that we want to create a lot of momentum as it relates to the marketing of a book. Selling books is really hard. And so the way that we can set our clients up for success is to, to create a lot of energy, buzz, um, conversation all around the author and their ideas and my belief is that the launch is really just the beginning any author needs to have a commitment to promote their book for the long haul you know for a year or two um, and really for a lifetime if you care enough about a message to write a book then yeah. you should care enough to promote that book and share its message for weeks months years to come um, so the fourth phase of our process is called advancing and that involves continuing to help the author as it relates to share, sharing content about their book, continuing to have interviews, continuing to have conversation so that their online presence creates interest and sustained sales for their book and for whatever else they're hoping to do in a bigger way in the world. Most of our authors are never going to make back the money they spend on publicity through sales alone. So there has to be some kind of other end game, whether that's public speaking or consulting or training. Um, most of our authors are going to um, make more money on those than they'll ever make on writing a book. Right, right. Since those avenues, obviously, they'd be able to make <clears throat> a much bigger income if they got into some of those types of things. Correct. Now, that's awesome. So, I mean, you guys really kind of provide like an all-around service, and I would assume this is going to be, you know, it sounds like it would be, wouldn't be would be selling quite for like a beginner, like someone who might be just like launching a small ebook on Kindle, for example. No, for the most part, we work with authors who are fairly well established. Most of them are publishing with traditional publish publishers. Um, and to be honest with you, John, most of our clients are 50 or older. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, it, it represents a unique challenge as it relates to helping folks who maybe have not been as tech savvy, you know, maybe not as comfortable with the channels, um, and helping them to, to really dig in and make a name for themselves online because most of them already are established as thought leaders in the real world. You know, maybe they've been academics or business people, but they don't have that online recognition. And so what we're really hoping to do through our work is to reflect what's true about them in the real world through their online presence. Right, right. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, one of the things that you mentioned I wanted to kind of touch upon a little bit more was uh, you said that uh, when you go through and, you know, you'll reach out to a number of these bloggers or kind of like leaders in this in their niche and, you know, you hope to get some publicity from those other bloggers, maybe have them 
uh, you know, write something on their own blog or or hopefully do an interview, something like that. Uh, you know, how do you go about approaching you know some of these other people to reach out to them? Uh, yeah, that's comes... yeah, that's a great question. So, John, based on the fact that I was a blogger myself, you know, starting in two thousand nine, when I started the business, I already had a well-established network of connections, and so I created this blogger network called Team Buzz Builder and all those folks are on an email list and so as we sign new authors and we have new books to offer we email out to our Team Buzz Builder list and many of them are on board for pretty much any book I bring to them they'll raise their hand and we send out copies of the books to this network um, I think that most of our Team Buzz Builder network counts it a privilege to be included in book launches you know they get um, some inner access to the authors to get to know the authors they get free copies of the books um, in many cases we're providing excellent guest content for their blogs which many of them are looking for you know it's difficult to provide great content all the time um, and so I think it's really a win-win as it relates to our bloggers and you know I've personally connected with many of them over the years you know even in small ways right. like if we know we try to send them cards you know I really am trying to build a community of these bloggers in the leadership and human resources space so that um, so that they enjoy participating as it relates to publicizing our books right so now is that like more of a private membership to you know to be a part of that that, that group or is that just something you know a group of sort of connections that you've built yourself or yeah it's definitely connections that I built myself but it's absolutely free and open to anyone who wants to join Hmm. Um, you know, the only real real requirement is being willing to opt into the email list. And once you've opted into the email list, you get notices from me, um, emails. Like we try not to send too many emails, but I'd say on average I send about one email a week, alerting the community to the books that we have coming up. Right. Um, and in most cases, uh, we have kind of a core group that raises their hands on many of our books and will publicize and promote our authors. But um, that kind of unique positioning with this blogger network allows us, um, when a book is coming out, I'll send out an email in the morning and I'll say, hey, you know, today we're launching um, whatever the book is of the day. That uh, One of the big launches we have coming up is a launch for an author named Mike Myatt, and his book is Hacking Leadership. So during his launch week, I'll send out an email to Team Buzz Builder, and we'll have some really easy-to-use resources. For example, I, I'm sure you've seen like the click to tweets, and I embed yeah. those in my email, and I'll say, hey, it's time for Mike's launch. Will you send a tweet now? And within a few minutes of me sending out that email, all the people who have opened the email click that it takes only a moment but in doing so they're providing a ton of value to our authors and they're sharing valuable content with their online communities so it's it really is a win for everyone yeah that, that's really awesome I like that you know obviously there's some incentive for them I'll have to uh, put a link in the show notes if that's a you know if that's something free that anyone could really join oh absolutely um, definitely I, I mean I think that um, the other thing about Team Buzz Builder is that there are plenty of publicists out there who are trying to get their books into the hands of bloggers for reviews. And I think quite often when people get a pitch from a PR agency and they don't know the people in the PR agency, they kind of glaze over when they see the email and delete it. You know, maybe the book is fabulous, but they don't know that publicists, you know, they get a lot of books in their mailbox that they never ask for. So the way that we're trying to turn that on, on its head is look, relationships with these bloggers we um for anybody who's in the team buzz builder network who shares their RSS feed to their blog with us we set it up on our automatic tweets so that we're regularly promoting the members of that team buzz builder community uh, by sending out links to their blog posts so that's another way that we try to add value and go kind of a step beyond what other publicity companies are doing to actually build relationships with those influencers who honestly we could not do our work without right Right. Now, how many members do you have in that group as of now? You know, it's a small but mighty list of 250 influencers. Yeah, I mean, even if you got, you know, even if 50 of those people left reviews on an Amazon book as it was launched, I know that's going to help get it up the ranks fairly quickly, especially for a newer book. Absolutely. And I, I think that because selling books is so hard, you know, we want to leverage whatever... Um, publicity we can on our authors behalf. We actually relaunched a book recently that already has 85 Amazon reviews in the first month. Wow. Which is really unusual. So that's a record for us. We were pretty excited. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know that, um, you know, I, I figured, I, I'm sure you've seen this, but um, Gary Vaynerchuk has recently launched a book, and it just seems that he's everywhere is what it what it's kind of coming down to with that book launch. And that he's yeah, he is a... He is a smart marketer. I already bought seven copies of that book. <laughs> I haven't picked it up yet, but uh, I noticed that he's just doing all kinds of different tactics to to get that book out there. He he's had contests, uh, giving away free posters, webinars, uh, and he's got kind of um, you know I I know yesterday one of the one of the really big influencers and marketers out there, Marie Forleo, sent out an email and she did like a uh, whole TV episode with him. So it's crazy, like he's everywhere. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, one of the things about Gary is obviously he's a social media icon, and so he likely has been developing tons of relationships for many years, and now he can kind of uh, cash in on, on what he's done to help others. Now, um, in the case of our authors, many of them have not invested as heavily in an online presence, so it's it's definitely more difficult to get those placements, um, but in our own circle of influence as it relates to leadership and management titles, I feel like we're doing something similar as it relates to our books seeming to be everywhere. Uh, not quite at the level of, a, let's see, what's the name of the book, Jib, Jab, Right Hook? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine have not arrived. Uh, hopefully Amazon will deliver them soon. <laughs> now, um, do you guys do a lot with Kindle as well, or is this mostly um, actual books? I don't know if you kind of do like dual launches where the you know you'll put have these books published on Kindle platform as well as an, you know a real book. Uh, well, absolutely. So, as I mentioned before, most of our authors are publishing with traditional publishers who, of course, release the book in multiple formats. And part of our effort is around making sure we draw attention to the Kindle editions of, of the books as well. In fact, this uh, book that we launched recently had has had in the first month, you know, 500 Kindle sales. And when I spoke to the sales and marketing people at um, at the publisher that we work with, they said that's maybe 10 times what they typically see in Kindle sales um, in, in the beginning of a book getting out into the world. And as it relates to overall for this particular book we just launched, they said it's about four times the sales of, of a typical book that they release. So um, I'm thrilled to see the f that, that our work makes a difference. Yeah. Now, um, in terms of obviously you have this group of people that's able to help with reviews and sort of... Um you know, in, I guess a syndication group in, in a sense to do all these extra things to kind of give it a boost. What are some of the other things that you guys are doing to, you know, promote these book launches? Well, for the most part, we also um, have a webinar for every author. Uh, we have a, a different email list of folks who have attended our webinars, and we uh, offer these free webinars to expose bigger communities to the content of our author's books. Yeah. Um, you know, we do a lot with email marketing to our clients' own lists as it relates to really wanting to mobilize our clients' networks of friends and colleagues in sharing about their books. We also leverage Focus, which is a, a, a marketing company. We leverage PR web news releases and we also monitor Harrow, help a reporter out on behalf of our authors to pitch them for relevant news stories to the yeah. traditional media. Um, we use our own channels, so my company, I personally have a Twitter account, and then my company has two or three more that we've cultivated over the years, and so we leverage those um, channels on behalf of our authors, you know, sharing content regularly as um, on our Facebook pages, our Google Plus pages, our LinkedIn company page, you know, all the Twitter accounts. Um, we also have a couple of other strategic partnerships, so I partner with a guy named Tom Schulte who runs a linked a LinkedIn group called Link to Leadership, and he also has a website. He has, you know, 20 or 30,000 uh, leaders from business and industry who are a part of that LinkedIn group, and so we offer our books for review to that group as well. And then we see reviews of our book on his highly trafficked leadership site. Um, we we have another strategic partnership with a a nonprofit called the Lead Change Group, and the Lead Change Group is again one of the most trafficked leadership blogs that's out there. And so we often have our clients' content featured there. Um, and all of it is orchestrated. So we have a process and a plan of, you know, all the various components and bringing them um, to life during the launch week. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like quite the service. It really you know, appears that you have a lot of connections with these other people that just give you guys the ability to expand that reach. Absolutely. It's all about the relationships. 
Yeah, I mean that's that's what I've been. I I feel like almost every person I have on the show, it's that they've built. Um, they've really built quite a business because of the relationships they've been able to build. Yeah, and I think that the key thing is that um, you can't really come to building the relationships um, be, with an end goal in mind. Like I think if I had started my Facebook and Twitter presence knowing that I wanted to build a business, you come to that with a much different attitude. And honestly, when I started, John, I, I very much was only coming for the relational connections that I could find. And so um, I think you get different results. So when you come with an attitude of wanting to serve others and give others and add value to others, you get a much different return than when you come with, you know, this need to make a living or and not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I want to make money and build a, a successful and uh, financially viable business. Um, and I have seen plenty of financial success in my business so far. But if that's your main motivation when you start out as it relates to building the connections, people can see that. And uh, you won't have the same success as it relates to um, establishing those connections. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know like, you know, with me originally, my journey was sort of, I was very much in this sort of make money online mode. And when I started this whole, um, this whole show back in March, I just decided to get focused on one thing. And um, you know, I'm now officially actually making some profit with, with my show and that's because I obviously stayed focused and I really stopped really thinking about the money. I just enjoyed what I was doing and I kept doing it. Yeah, I think that that's, that's the key. I don't know if you're a fan of Chris Brogan since we've been talking about social media icons, but yeah. I think Chris, Chris Brogan is an amazing model because Chris adds a ton of value for people all the time. And I've heard Chris say, you know, you have to add value before you can extract value. And so if you can stay focused on the value that you can bring and the difference that you can make. Um, yeah, I do I do know of him. It, I, I followed his uh, email list for a little while as well, or I do have him. I'm subscribed to his email list, rather. Me too. And you know what? Sometimes I'll take the weekend off, like go online, unplug completely. And on Sunday morning when I would normally get Chris's email, it's like, oh my goodness, I miss Chris, and you know, I <laughs> have to wait till Monday to open my email. Um, he definitely adds a lot of value and um, causes people to think about, you know, how to build communities online in a, in a really amazing and powerful way. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, in terms of, uh, I wanted to ask too, uh, you know, when normally doing these book launches, have you found like a big difference in um, Kindle to actual book sales? I think most people are still selling more print books than they're selling ebooks. Okay, because it just seems like you know I go online and it, there's an unreal amount of these people coming out with these Kindle courses and talking all about Kindle and you know I it's funny because I um you know one of the one of the popular internet marketing forums is one of the only avenues I knew to really get a lot of traffic on my on a you know maybe a product launch, so I. May, I wrote up a small ebook. It's maybe 30 to 40 pages, and it's all about connecting with entrepreneurs since I've had a lot of success with that with my show. And uh, I put it up on this forum, and I only made a sale. And I thought maybe, you know, if I did something like, like this on Kindle, um, I was asking everybody for reviews, which obviously was just going into a forum thread, and it's great for people who are visually looking at it, but whereas uh, in a platform like Amazon with Kindle, those reviews will count towards uh, ranking as well as, you know, probably a, a great visual appeal. Um, so I thought about redoing it on Kindle, but sure. there's obviously so much to learn about. That's like a whole new step. I, I read they have the, uh, I think it's called KDP, which is like you can do a free promotion of the mm -hmm. book, put it into their into their system to allow people to get it for free, which I would totally love to do. You know, I've been giving it away for free to a lot of people because I haven't had a lot of success selling it because I don't think I really put it out there the right way. But um, I'd like to get it on Kindle and actually revise it and see what that could do for making, you know, I'm not really worried about making an income. I thought, you know, putting it up there for $3 is totally fine. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just getting myself out there a little bit more, maybe a way to build my brand more. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, John. Um, I do have one book on Kindle, 31 Days of Twitter Tips, Grow Your Online Influence 12 Minutes at a Time. Mm -hmm. And I published that, I don't know, summer before last maybe on Kindle. And every now and then I'll get like this notice that I got ten bucks in my bank account as a result. So um, I've never necessarily sold a lot of, of Kindle books either. And I think that brings back the real, real hard truth about book marketing. Marketing books is hard. 
Yeah. So if you just put up a Kindle book and kind of leave it there to sit like I've done with mine, you're not going to really sell any. You need to have a plan and be active as it relates to promoting that title. Right. I mean, I figured for me it would have been cool because I could have that as like a link in my resources and new visitors to my site, people that are commonly coming to find my show would, would see that as a new way to, you know, maybe learn something new because it's basically all about how I've how I've sort of like leveraged a lot of the connections I've made and how I've been able to get a lot of the folks I've had on my show, things like that. Cool. But, well, I, I encourage you to do that. Go for it. Yeah, I think I think it's it's definitely in my uh, it's in my to do list of uh, of next items to conquer. I'm trying not to get too unfocused and do too many things at once. That's a problem I've sort of suffered with the last uh, couple of years since I got hooked on this whole online marketing thing. What's the topic of the book? Um, it's really just uh, I made it. I'm probably going to revise the title, but it's basically uh, I called it um, you know the blueprint for connecting with entrepreneurs, like you know the ultimate blueprint for connecting with entrepreneurs is what I called it, which was sort of a savvy like you know hook hook you know hook title. I felt like would be better for sort of the the types of um, titles people put out for some of these product launches. Um, but basically, it's all about stories that I've come up with where I'm going out and saying, um, you know, let's say I, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example. So one of the examples would be I left a comment on uh, Derek Halpern's blog, Derek Halpern from Social Triggers, mm -hmm. and he admitted later on commenting back on my, on my comment, and he wrote a blog post about the comment I left because he asked people to leave questions, and I basically put up a, a great topic regarding... Um, it was regarding people who, people who don't like believe in what you're doing. You know, like friends and family who don't who don't support you. Like haters. Yeah, exactly. Well, people, you know, like I have a lot of friends that when I started my whole venture online, they were just very negative. Like, why are you doing this? And one of them literally didn't. He would tell me he didn't want to come to my house because he didn't he didn't want to hear me talking about online marketing. And. I am now obviously profiting from it, and here they are all saying, "Oh well, good job," and they just, you know, they don't they don't say anything now. But uh, interesting. It's just really funny, and I told him about how I went to, I basically went to a friend's house one night with you know these same friends, and we were all getting ready to play computer games. I brought my laptop over for us to kind of relax and just have like a guys' night, hanging in and playing computer games. And um, I started watching a video from Derek on my my laptop while they were letting the game load. And they said, oh, you got to give that stuff up. And they're, like, making fun of me for it. And, you know, they were like, oh, this, he's watching, watching some, you know, guy in the background. They were just making fun of me, basically. And I uh, left Eric a comment and told him that story. And he wrote a whole blog post about it. So it's like those kinds of things. Then I give an example in my book where I say, well, now I've sort of set the ground with Derek. Like, he knows who I am. You know, I'm commenting on his blog all the time. I'm communicating with him. If I reach out for an interview, now I've got a much higher probability of getting him on the show, which uh, just so happens he's told me he's busy the rest of the year, but um, either way, I mean, it's not like I'm a stranger at this point, you know, and those are the things that I could do to reach out and get more publicity for myself, um, things like that, once I've offered them help. Um, another example was John Lee Dumas of the Entrepreneur on Fire uh, podcast, which is like, you know, he's one of the biggest marketing podcasts out there. He... Um, you know, he has a new membership course, and I decided to, I offered, hey, I could make you some training videos on how to use Google Hangouts that you could put into the membership area. So I made, you know, a couple 10-minute videos, and he put them up into the group, and, he, you know, he, he put in, like, little bubbles and stuff in the video that pop up uh, overlays that, you know, were promoting my show and my name. And uh, then I reached back out, and I said, hey, could I do a guest post on Entrepreneur on Fire? And then uh, what I did was I wrote, a guest post about like the top 15 email lists you know that I subscribe to and then I made it really detailed I spent hours on it and I published that and then obviously I reach out to all those bloggers and tell them hey I just had this guest post published on Entrepreneur on Fire which all of them are gonna know who Entrepreneur on Fire is so it's it's, it's a great way, great way to kinda get myself out there doing things like that where I'm helping people and then um, that's really what it's all about that's awesome but yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to get off on a tangent there. I oh, no worries. I wish you great see book. I think that would be a really good next step. 
Yeah, so that's sort of one of my goals. I mean, I, I'm becoming more and more, uh, uh, I guess, spending more time with writing has been a big thing with me because I'm writing for a magazine as well on iTunes, and that's a challenge because the editor is super critical about my writing. And I find that that's something, you know, I, I've thought about, you know, if say I were to get this ebook out there, I would assume. Do you guys do when you're when you're going through this? Do you do a lot of the editing services as well in terms of the book's content, or is that, or are you guys more on just the promotional side of things? I do have some great editors on my team. It's not a service that people contact us for often, but we definitely do it. Okay. Um, for the most part, though, the authors who come to us are working with traditional publishers, and they have their own editors. Great. Typically, the books are almost done by the time the people come to us. Although, honestly, my thought is that when someone even has an idea for a book, that's the time that you start to build your network. Right, right. Way in advance. You can never start too early. All right. Well, I know um, I know we're hitting about a half hour here. Was there anything else you wanted to share today? I think we, we covered a lot about your service, and if anyone wants to check it out, I'll send them over. You know, I'll put a link in the show notes to your blog, weavinginfluence.com. Sure. The only other thing I would say, I have another website. It's 12minutemedia.com. Okay. Where I sell some of the resources that I've written related to social media. But right now and for the foreseeable future, they're all free. So anyone who's interested in taking advantage of those resources can go to 12minutemedia.com and use the code, the number 600 and the word free. Uh, we, I was celebrating the fact that I had published 600 blog posts on my site. Um, so if, if those resources would add value to you, John, or to any of your listeners, they can feel free to go to 12minutemedia.com and download any of them with that code 600 free. Okay, great. I'll put a link in the show notes, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your morning. I know our schedules were a little off. so. Um, no worries. It's great to talk to you. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.